burn. I will feast on your entrails and devour your soul. <laughs> you know, Max, sneaking the bug into that exorcism was an uncharacteristic stroke of genius. Demonic possession is the gift that keeps on giving. What? Oh, Commissioner. Uh, no, that was uh, Max's aunt. Yes, 14 packs a day. What's that? Yes? Yes? No! Yes? Sweet Suffering Saint Sebastian on the sousaphone in a short story by Susan Sontag. We're on our way. Let me guess. Our friendly neighborhood demon just burnt down another monastery. No, Max, we have a far more bloodthirsty adversary this time. The President of the United States of America. Who? The man's gone nuts. He's enacting all kinds of crazy new laws. What else is new? Federally mandated group hugs before, during, and after all major sporting events. So? He's curtailing civil liberties, threatening the environment. Hey, that makes three of us. And he's about to introduce mandatory gun registration. Get the keys. I have to point out, Sam, that we could have avoided this gruesome accident if you just let me drive. And I have to point out that we could have avoided this gruesome accident if you hadn't jumped on my head shouting Jersey Devil, Jersey Devil and firing your gun out the window. I swear that woman was a dead ringer for him. Well, here we are, standing in an open field west of the White House. Let's go bring the hammer down on that so-called Commander-in-Chief. Hey, my missing boxing glove! It's always in the last place you look. Step aside, buddy. Freelance police. Just a moment, sir. Papa Bear, this is Super Bowl. Possible situation at the front door. Talking dog and uh, rabbit trying to gain access to the OO. Please advise, over. Super Bowl? Yeah, that's a negative on the access permission, sir. I'll have to ask you and your little friend to step away from the White House. Doggy Daddy, this is Loose Cannon. Request permission to pants this goon. Over. Before we try physical violence, Max, let's try dazzling the man with our razor-sharp wit and labyrinthine logical conundrums. Ah, emotional violence. Good plan. Did you call yourself Superball? Codename, sir. I'm a bouncer. Secret Service humor. And who's Papa Bear? Section Chief. Runs the operation. Protects the President. Oh, Superball. I get it. I want to talk to your manager. No can do, sir. He's with the president. I've had enough of this. Papa Bear, this is Super Bowl. Perp's exiting zone four now. Seem disgruntled. Stay on the lookout. Over. Now can we push him down and beat him with sewage-filled garbage bags until he runs crying into the reflecting pool? Tempting, Max, but these Secret Service guys hold a grudge. Hey, this phone only takes Susan B. Anthony dollars. It must be one of those stupid 555 phones. Yes, actually. 555-1984. Hey, Sam! Did I ever mention how I've memorized pi to 1,000 decimal places? It's 3.14159265358979... do you have a piece of paper handy? You want to write down the phone number? I remember the number. I want to write myself a reminder to smother you with a pillow in your sleep. Where are we going, Sam? Back to the office. I'll drive! Not while I'm alive. Exactly!
calling, Sam? The White House. White House. Agent Superball speaking. Hello. Please hold. Roger that. Our phone bill is sure going to be expensive this month. It's okay, Max. I've been paying them out of your retirement fund. Hello. Is anyone there? Whoa, look, Max. It's our favorite cultish crackpot, Hugh Bliss. Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. I want to buy something. Take my credit card. Put me on your mailing list. Anyone you want me to recruit? You're supposed to give the Stockholm Syndrome a few days to kick in, Max. Who has that kind of time? What's a big celebrity like you doing on our street, Hugh Bliss? Why, I'm spreading the great news about prismatology! The magic and science of unlocking the harmony of colors for a revolution in holistic personal and interpersonal well-being? Now translated into 15,000 different languages, including Esperanto! <laughs> Hooray! Hooray! Are the books selling well? Selling? You can't put a price on imagination! You can't sell the wonder of a daydream, or the laughter of a child. He's right. I've tried. Show us a magic trick, Hugh Bliss. Magic is easy when the colors of your soul are... Yeah, yeah, less <laughs> chatter, more magic. Okay! How about, I disappear! Well, your mind reading is obviously still working. It is! <laughs> now watch me as I vanish. Except you won't be able to watch me because I'll be gone! Hey, a free home delivery sign. Uh, the sign's not free, but... Oh, my book is! Hi, Hugh Bliss. Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. Can you disappear again? I want to figure out how you did it. It's easy, Sam. I take all the colors from my surroundings and spin them into a great big... Okay, yeah, I was just being polite. I don't care how you do it. Okay! Hey, a free home delivery sign. Give me all you got. It's the Army's new recruiting slogan. That's a lot better than their old one. What are you, chicken? Gonna cry now, baby? Apparently, there's no room in the military budget for quality adhesives. Whee! Where we going, Sam? We're off to the White House. Oh, boy! Now, a lot of these same folks will say that we're wrong for introducing this federal pudding embargo. They envy our freedom. I ask you, what have they got to hide? Unless they're secretly sitting on stockpiles of pudding, and oh yes, we will find them. They've got nothing to be afraid of. So in conclusion, America, get your back up off the wall. Dance, come on, marzipan and good night. It's worse than we thought, Max. He's crazier than a caffeine-addled dingo in an Adelaide maternity ward. I think he makes a lot of good points. Those puddings are trying to steal our jobs. And I especially like how he does that spinny thing with his eyes. By the whiskey-soaked beard of Ulysses S. Grant, that's it. The president's not crazy. He's been hypnotized. We've got to snap him out of it, Max, and pronto. How do we do that again? We hit him over the head, like we do with all hypnotized people. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Hello. Is anyone there? Hello. 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 No, sir. 
I said soda abuse. It's a very important issue. Was I? No comprende, son. But I'm speaking English. Ah, are, are you two fellas the interpreters? It's about time. Darndest thing, we just had a couple imposters in here. Dead ringers for you two. Were they walking around examining everything and engaging everyone in pointless conversations? Those are the ones. Those accursed clones. When will their devilish mimicry end? Help me out with this here potentate, would you? Can't understand a dang word. But that doesn't make sense. I don't even have an accent. Oh no, momento, por favor. Impatient little guy, ain't he? Good day, Mr. President. We come in peace, as far as you know. Ooh, finally! The interpreters! Where have you been? We're ready to interpret for you. All right! Let's get this party started. <laughs> Mr. President, my fellow Americans, I come to warn you about a serious epidemic facing our country. The scourge of soda abuse. Many former popheads like myself found ourselves in the endless cycle of addiction and elimination until we believed there was no hope. I don't know what you're saying, son, but you're selling it, boy. Good job. I ask you, how long can this epidemic continue? What was that? He said, what's a guy got to do to get a drink around here? Aha, uh -huh. I know what you need. And ice cold orange sugar fizz. I swear by it. No, that's not what I want at all. I must resist, but I am thirsty. And just one couldn't hurt. Frosty cold and so delicious. All the progress I've made. They were about to give me my five week pin. I almost feel bad about this. I don't have a conscience, Sam. What's your excuse? Blessed angels of carbonation, fill me with your syrupy nectar! Ew! Yeah, now I'm not so much guilty as repulsed. Keep it coming! More! I need more! I need... I need a bathroom! Which way is the bathroom? Which way is the war room? It's that door right over there! But I don't... Oh, thank you! Where do you think you're going? I've got to get in there! Bad! We've got a priority red number two here in the Oval Office. No, it's just number one. Escorting the suspect to holding cell for interrogation? Come with me, sir. But it'll only take a second. Please, let me go! That was fun! Okay, now I didn't catch all that. What did he say? Now it's time for some checks and balances, freelance police style. Max, will you do the honors? Gladly. Look it, fellas. My fingertips look like little tadpoles. They just don't make these guys like they used to. That's no guy, Max. It's a damned ugly puppet. Ah, the drawstring in his back should have been our first clue. Our first clue should have been the swirly eyes. But, silly me, I thought hypnotizee, not hypnotizer. What? Yes, an ingenious device being used to hypnotize the TV-watching public. But who was controlling him? I'm gonna take days to get that smell out of the interrogation room. What? What have you done? He was like that when we got here. Sam did it! <laughs> so these two numbskulls managed to off the president. It was a deep tissue massage gone horribly wrong. Ninjas! Sam did it! Still, ratings from the last State of the Union address were even lower than reruns of Midtown Cowboys. I didn't expect to have to replace the president so soon. Now that these idiots have forced my hand... Uh, we're standing right here. We can hear everything you're saying. It's time for a leader the people will have to listen to. Agents Jackson, Burr, and Degambe, we are moving the timeline forward. Commence phase two of the operation. I'll prepare the new candidate.
Not quite the reaction I would have expected from a Secret Service agent discovering two people over the decapitated body of the President. What do you think this fake body is made of? Can I keep it? No time for that now, Max. We've got to stop the... Wait, what's that noise? Blessed scuba diving Buddha on a banana boat with cocktail onions and a map to the stars' homes. Yeah! They've reanimated America's most beloved president. I always thought Taft was shorter. Not Taft, you deficient. My fellow Americans, I am Abraham Lincoln. As you know by now, your president was recently murdered by two mysterious interpreters. But turn not to fear and despair. I have returned to guide us through this troubled time. A vote for me is a vote for Abraham Lincoln. I'll get it! What's that? Uh-huh. Lincoln Memorial. Right. Hydraulic motors and robotic implants. Yes. Okay. I see. We're on it. Wrong number? That was the commissioner, Max. If this new Mecha Lincoln wins the emergency election, the nefarious forces controlling him will have unchecked power to destroy the entire free world. I hate when they do that. That's why one of us is going to have to run against him. You got to answer the phone. Okay, fair's fair. Max, we're going to make you the next president of the United States. Yes! Free home delivery. Mr. Lincoln, as a candidate for office, my pal Max would like to engage in a thoughtful discussion of the key issues. Followed by a round of spiteful mudslinging. Hmm, I see. Well, this is a bit irregular. As you're well aware, I'm the most beloved president in history. So I just assumed I'd be running unopposed. Oh, no, you didn't. You ain't all that. I freed the slaves. I was star of a popular television sitcom. I'm on the penny. I was on TV. Now, gentlemen, we can resolve this like adults through moderate reason debate. Very well, then. In the spirit of democracy, I say, bring it. And it's a beautiful day on the White House lawn as we bring you the first in a series of debates for this emergency election for U.S. president. In the Republican corner, we have the giant animated statue of Abraham Lincoln. And representing the random violence and destruction party, there is the hyperkinetic, rabbit-like creature known as Max. Acting as completely impartial moderator for the debates will be Sam. The candidates are ready, so let's listen in. Mr. Lincoln, I'd like you to tell the voters your stand on some of the tough issues. Very well. How do you plan to solve the problem of toxic waste? Free home delivery. Ooh, an effective but very controversial proposal from candidate Lincoln. And the crowd did not like that idea one bit. Let's see how it affected the polls. I'm glad that I've been given one more life to give for my country. Two wrongs don't make a right. Whee! It's time for another in this ongoing series of debates between Abraham Lincoln and Max. We turn you over to our impartial moderator, Sam. Where do you stand on religion and schools? Two wrongs don't make a right. Did we hear that right? Lincoln just came down against both religion and education. Wow, that's got to hurt him in the polls.
Give me all you got. Contestants, it's time for our lightning round. Mr. Lincoln, I'm going to name some of the tough issues facing our country today. I'd like you to sum up your stand on those issues in a few concise words. Well, all right. I'm afraid this will have to be completely off the top of my head, as I have nothing prepared. How would you describe your tax plan? Give me all you got. And candidate Lincoln has proposed one shocker of an economic strategy, which even Democrats are calling a trifle excessive. That had to have hurt him in the polls. Mr. Lincoln, would you like to say a few words to the audience? <clears throat> Thank you. This is a date that will be remembered for centuries to come. Today is the day we return America to greatness. I stand here at the steps of the White House, not above the people, but with the people. Only one man can lead the nation through this troubled time. I, Abraham Lincoln, am that man. The time to act is now. Thank you. <laughs> I've heard better addresses from the 411 operator. What did you just say? Hey, Lincoln! Captain Ahab called! He wants his beard back! I'm gonna slap you silly, you little punk! Save it for the debate, Max. It's Lincoln's campaign flyer. I want you. Honest, dedicated, over a century of experience. Abraham Lincoln is your man. Where are we going, Sam? Back to the office. Shotgun! Hey, Sybil. What's new in the world of frequent random career reassessment? Hi, fellas. I'm really excited. I've found the perfect job for me. You don't say. That's right. I, Sybil Pandemic, am now a professional matchmaker. I thought I smelled phosphorus. I thought I smelled that joke coming down the turnpike, burning oil and dragging its muffler. It's a dating service, Max. I figured that if a smart, successful career woman like me could be having so much trouble finding a date, there must be plenty of other people who could use help. You're having trouble finding your soulmate? You don't know the half of it. It seems like all the guys I meet are total losers. No offense. None taken. Hey! Or else they're borderline psychopaths. No offense. None taken. It's the borderline cases you have to watch out for. What kind of man are you looking for? Older men. Guys with a little history to them are such a turn-on. Oh, and tall men. And distinguished. And he should be experienced. All right, enough already. Yes, I will go out with you, Sybil. I thought she was talking about me. What's next on the career horizon? Next? This is it. What could be a better job than helping people find their perfect match? Volcano God. Good point. I'll stick to the dating business, though. How many couples have you managed to escort to romantic bliss? So far, none. None is the loneliest number. But I've got a feeling things will start to pick up after the holidays. All that stress makes for a lot of messy breakups and a lot of people looking for romance on the rebound. So we have something to look forward to. See you around, Sybil. What's this? A new application? Yeah, it's uh, for a friend of ours. Let's see. Not THE Abraham Lincoln. He's tall, distinguished, loves the theater. He sounds perfect. <sighs> that chump doesn't have half my cute, fluffy marketability. Do you think your computer can find him a date? Computer? Nothing. This guy sounds perfect for me. 
Oh, but he didn't leave his phone number. Next time you see him, give him my number. I'd love to meet him. Nah. Who are you calling, Sam? Sybil. Hello, Abe? Is that you? I, Abraham Lincoln, am that man. Oh, well, Mr. President, it's just, it's just such an honor to talk to you. I saw your application, and I was wondering, would you like to go out sometime? This is a date that will be remembered for centuries to come. Oh my, you are a charmer, aren't you? Well then, Mr. Rail Splitter, where would you like to meet? I stand here at the steps of the White House. At the White House, got it. What time should I meet you? The time to act is now. Oh, I love that decisiveness. I'll rush right over. I'm gonna slap you silly, you little punk. What? I didn't catch that last part. I will feast on your entrails and devour your soul. What? Abe? What's going on? Uh, see you soon. Gotta go. So, to sum up, Family values are the bedrock of this nation. Our fidelity, honesty, and loyalty to family is our most sacred asset as Americans. Candidate Max, your rebuttal? Yoo-hoo, Mr. Lincoln! I believe we have a question in the audience from someone who is not Candidate Lincoln's wife. Oh, hi, Sam. Hi, Max. Greetings, random harlot! Abe, I'm here! Are you ready for our date? What? I, I've never seen this woman before in my life. But on the phone, you sounded so eager to meet me. Listen to me, America. I did not arrange a date with this woman. Oh, so she's good enough to fool around with, but not to date. Mr. Lincoln, I can't believe you're doing this to me. <laughs> The results from the emergency election are coming in. And it appears that former sitcom star Max has been elected president of the United States. In an unprecedented show of bipartisan solidarity, all of the country's political parties have desperately asked for a recount. Let's cut to the White House lawn to hear candidate Lincoln's address. You've got to be b***ing me, you idiots. He took the news much better than expected. Democracy? I will make you all my hypnotic slaves! <laughs> Max, that robotic Abe Lincoln will enslave the entire East Coast if we don't stop him. Who cares? I'm the president of the U.S. Let's go bomb someone into oblivion. Not just anyone, Max. Abe Lincoln must die. Yes! Finally, Mr. President, you're here! That's the president? People will vote for anyone these days. Obviously. What's that supposed to mean? It means... Never mind. Look, Max, all the soda poppers are here. I don't have time for foreign dignitaries. Check out all the cool stuff on my new desk! It's the official United States calendar. Twelve of the hottest Supreme Court justices in their skimpiest, naughtiest swimsuits. Even better, Max. You can actually change the official date. Oh, boy! We now declare today April 8th, Easter Sunday. Cripes, we'd better start hiding eggs on the White House lawn. Already did it, Sam. 
Max, are these the eggs that are made of metal and shaped like a pineapple and have a pin in them? Don't be silly, Sam. I took the pins out first. Hey, an Easter egg. You mean a carefully hidden item of absolutely no actual value? Exactly. It's the Secretary of Presidential Whimsy Ribbon. Looks like Max can use this to appoint someone as an honorary cabinet secretary. Oh boy! We now declare today April 26th, Secretary's Day. That's supposed to be Administrative Professionals Day. Wow, Sam. When I picked you for vice president, I didn't know you were such a politically correct bleeding heart liberal. All right then, Secretary's Day. Max, I mean His Excellency El Jefe Maximilian I, Intimidator of the Realm, has a special surprise for you. Better get those handkerchiefs ready. This could get sentimental. Agent Superball, we have decided to reward you for your excellent service to your country, for your unwavering commitment to preventing us from being where we most desperately needed to be, for your unerring devotion to being a constant hindrance in our task. For all these things and more, we now dub thee Superball. Secretary of Mysterious Gaseous Emissions. So we have spoken, so it shall be. All hail, Max. I'm overwhelmed, sir. I don't know what to say. Now run along to a cabinet meeting. I'm afraid I can't do that, sir. You've got to be kidding me. I still have my orders. I'm not a secretary, sir. That was fun! Max, I mean His Excellency El Jefe Maximilian the First. Better get those handkerchiefs ready. This could get Agent Superball, we have decided to reward for your unwavering commitment to for your unerring devotion to be for all these things and more. Secretary of the Interior. We already have one of those. Oh, exterior? We have one of those too. Fine, Secretary of the Posterior. <laughs> <laughs> all hail Max. Stand aside, pal. The president needs to get into the war room. I'm afraid that's not allowed, sir. Perhaps you didn't hear our advisor. We would like to see our war room. No can do, sir. Orders. Today is Secretary's Day. You have to take the day off. It's the law, Jack! A vacation? Permission to weep openly, sir. Not just granted, but encouraged. The forces of bureaucracy win again. I love this country. Where are we going, Sam? Back to the office. Shotgun! Hiya, Sybil. How are things in the world of computer-generated romance? Oh, I'm not doing that anymore. Can you believe that guy? Never mentioning that he was married? Men are such self-centered jerks. Preach it, girlfriend! So you changed careers again? Yeah. Now I'm running a dating service. Um, come again? A carbon dating service. 
I bought this astoundingly useful machine that tells me how old things are. I usually just cut them in half and count the rings. There's a reason you're not invited to birthday parties anymore. I wanted a fresh start and a new career to get my mind off that fiasco with Honest Abe. This wasn't my first choice, but I got a good deal on the carving dating equipment online, and I couldn't afford to change my sign. How does carbon dating work? I don't know. Something about carbon-14 and half-lives and radiation. I'm impressed with your detailed scientific knowledge. Very professional. That's the beauty of it. I don't really need to know anything. I just aim my little machine at something and it tells me how old it is. Allow me to demonstrate. This tiki is... Oh my gosh! It's... it's 2,000 years old! This is fantastic! Old is good? Absolutely! I can have my office put on the National Register of Historic Places. I might even get a grant. I'd be rich! You're having financial problems? I'm afraid so. After my public humiliation with Lincoln, all the applicants for my dating service demanded their money back. Not to mention all the money tied up in pending litigation with the clients who watched Max's dating video. I stated very clearly up front that viewer discretion was advised. Believe me, I would love to just close up shop for a while and take a vacation. Forget about Honest Abe and all the lawsuits. It was a wardrobe malfunction! But unless I get a major windfall, I have to hope the carbon dating business takes off. Can we borrow your carbon dating machine? No way! That machine is still my only chance to take care of my money problems. Unless I get a grant, since I'm now on the National Register of Historic Places. There's no way I'm letting it out of my sight. See you around, Sybil. Where are we going, Sam? We're off to the White House. Oh, boy! Hey, look, Max. It's the presidential discretionary budget. You have $100 million to allocate however you want. What a delightfully random and convenient figure. Where are we going, Sam? Back to the office. Shotgun! Hmm, Sybil left the door unlocked. She's probably living it up on some tropical island on the taxpayer's dime. I bet she's getting abducted in some sleazy nightclub, forced to do unspeakable things for a power-mad despot, before narrowly escaping his volcano-top lair with only one of her kidneys left. Don't be such a pessimist, Max. Sorry, Sam. It's just no fair. We're stuck here working, and she gets to have all the fun. It's Sybil's carbon dating machine. What's shaking, Bosco? Ah, greetings, Cobra's dog rabbit. I'm having trouble placing the accent this month. Mid-Atlantic states? The San Fernando Valley? Hmm, I get more of a vague Baltic vibe. Something in a light check pattern. Ha ha ha! Comrade Maximilian makes the funny joke. I am Vladimir Ilyevich Bosco Vorsky. Russian proprietor of workers' glorious warehouse of inconvenience, no? No! But now, I make new start in America, which I love. So, there's no need to aiming sophisticated targeting equipment at me. 
What's with the Soviet bloc, Bosco? It's perfectly natural, comrades. I work with the American government in spirit of Glasnost. They know. They know. Who knows what? The feds, man. Uncle Sam. The government's watching us all the time. So that's why I always feel an overbearing presence just out of my field of vision, watching and judging my every move. That's me, Max. Why is the government spying on you, Bosco? I don't know. Maybe it's because I know too much. Um... Just humor the poor guy, Max. But I make new start in America, which I love. So it's no need to target me. I suppose you've got some ridiculously complex whirligig to defend yourself against the feds? It's the people, comrades. Workers will overthrow fascist regime. What about us loafers? All are welcome. Come their victory, workers will unite to bring downfall of corrupt administration. We will number in tens of millions. That's a lot of Bolsheviks. No, it's all true. Plus, I'm working on a satellite missile defense system. Missile defense system? Isn't that more than a little bit overkill? Yet, we are strong like bear against attack. I'm working on modifying BTAD's part two. Your anti-delivery system? That's right. It was already programmed to keep people from delivering goods to the store. So I just went into the database and changed beef jerky to intercontinental ballistic missiles. So now anyone can just deliver a blimp load of beef jerky to your store without fear of reprisal? A small price to pay for freedom. We want to buy something. Ah, it's evil but necessary private enterprise. What do you got? His most glorious invention, comrades. He's useful for, um, how you say, questioning. Questioning. His true serum makes easy even the most difficult, how do you say, uh, interrogation. Interrogation. True serum? Is this another one of your half-baked overpriced gimmicks or does it actually work? Both. Will make anyone get rid of inhibitions and telling, uh, how you say, uh, complete and honest truth. Your accent sucks. Hey, it's already working. We'd like that truth serum, Comrade Boscovich. Is good. Price is 867.5309 rubles. How much is that in real money? 100 million dollars. I think your rate of exchange is a little off, Boscovorsky. Fall of Berlin Wall brings great strength to our economy. Isn't that a little pricey for truth serum? It's bargain. It really does work, and I haven't even tried it yet. Sam, this morning I used your toothbrush. Results are guaranteed. I used it to clean out my ears. This is refreshingly liberating. Besides, I need the money to complete my satellite defense system. I needed to clean out my ears because I'd been rummaging through- Okay, I've heard enough. Nothing for us right now. See you later, Bosco. He's no Bosco, comrades. He's only loyal worker Bosco Vorsky, who is no threat to glorious American government whatsoever. Well, Bosco, by my readings, these weenies date from the early Cretaceous period. Uh, da. It's a special bargain for you. Still tasty. A half of today only. You don't understand. Your store is now a national historic place. These weenies are valuable artifacts. Really? I mean, of course. I'm preserving the heritage of my people. Just how valuable are we talking about here? We'll get back to you on that. Where are we going, Sam? We're off to the White House. Oh, boy! Hello, Comrade Bosco. Hail to the Chief. I don't know how you guys did it, 
But I just got a huge check from the government. You earned it, Bosco. It's not easy to perfectly preserve weenies that predate the discovery of fire. Not to mention the teeming microcosm growing in the bathroom. We're considering making it a national wildlife preserve. Now I can finally finish my satellite defense system. So we can have the truth serum? Sure. Let me dig it up from the labs. This is a bottle of vodka. But it works. Trust me. Trust me. Get a couple of shots of that in somebody, and they'll tell you all their secrets. Thanks, Bosco. Where are we going, Sam? We're off to the White House. Oh, boy! Care for a drink? It's soda, right? You brought more soda! Sure, why not? That's got more kick than the other ones. Thanks, Simon Max. You guys, you guys are my best friends. Now can we get back to the deliberation? What's the point? You still think Peeper's idea is stupid. Stupid? You never told me you thought my idea was stupid. He said your idea of adding Herbert Hoover hugging the four other presidents was the Stupidest thing he'd ever heard! Well, it is! Hoover wasn't even a president, which means he certainly wasn't the most loving of all the presidents. Well, at least I didn't suggest putting a parking garage in George Washington's forehead, like some four-eyed freaks I know. You little... You big... Of course you realize this means war! 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 What wondrous thing is this the Defcon Klaxon's ring? A flashing light above the door, there's just one thing it could be.
well. Let's not do that again. Looks like a remote homing beacon in the frigid Antarctic. So peaceful. So serene. Wanna blow it up? You have to ask? The homing beacon to the Kremlin doesn't seem to be working. It was probably turned off in the spirit of Glasnost. More likely those lazy commie bastards forgot to change the batteries. Lazy former commie bastards, Max. It's the distant, peaceful world of Krypton. They mock us with their utopian society of crystal cities and absentee parents. They must be exterminated! Well, what do you know? Bosco was right. The government really has been targeting his store for destruction. Won't he be glad when we tell him? What do you say we keep this to ourselves, Max? You're right! We don't want to ruin the surprise! Where are we going, Sam? Back to the office. Shotgun! Look, stuck to the camera. That must be the homing beacon for the intercontinental ballistic missiles aimed at Bosco's store. What was that? Uh, he said, that must be the best price on baby wipes I've ever seen. Where are we going, Sam? After that rampaging Lincoln. Yes! Well, he wasn't hard to find. Just had to follow the trail of broken campaign promises. That's pretty profound for a high-speed car chase, Max. I like to think I transcend genre convention, Sam. Nice toss, Max. We'd better act fast before he manages to knock off the beacon. Or choose his own back off to escape. Where are we going, Sam? We're off to the White House. Oh, boy! Looks like the targeting beacon is still stuck on Lincoln. This is a pretty impressive temper tantrum, Sam. At this rate, he'll have enslaved all of D.C. and most of Baltimore by tomorrow morning. He can't. You're right, Max. Still, I think we should stop him. We haven't got anything better to do. Mr. President? Don't mind if I do. Quick, let's go. Shouldn't we revel a little? We don't want to miss this. My bidding, I am the most powerful presidential monument ever created! Whee! That 
was better than feeding laxatives to pigeons on parade days. We broke two presidents in one afternoon. A personal best. Well, it looks like the country is saved, at least from mass hypnosis. What do you want to do now? Let's abuse my powers as leader of the free world to squeeze the middle class until they're burning their own shoes for heat. Sounds fun, but I was thinking we could treat ourselves to some chocolate frosted gut bombs and then have a little target practice down to the Smithsonian. Sam, you're my best friend. Agent Chuckles report. Query status. Lincoln Gambit, four score, stroke seven. Query not acknowledged and acceptable timeout parameters. Error. 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 Error.